Right. Uh, let me just uh, quickly go over the agenda for today. Uh, I want to start with uh, maybe you know a couple of slides, just explain to you what product portfolio management is. Uh, we will talk about. We will conduct a quick quiz, so be ready for that. Uh, I will talk about the three pillars of the product portfolio management. Uh, we will talk about product portfolio management lifecycle, and uh, just for illustrational purposes, I'm going to share one full product portfolio management uh, model developed for one of my clients uh, in Europe. Uh, once we kind of figure out, at least at the high level, what product portfolio management is, uh, we will get into building a scoring model, which is one of the key uh, components of uh, any product portfolio management model. Uh, we will talk about how to pick the scoring variables. Uh, we will talk about the halo effect and what to do about it. So we will talk about measurability. In the next phase of this presentation, using the scoring model, um, well, an example scoring model. I will show you two ways of uh, prioritizing the projects. Uh, one is the simple one uh, without the strategic alignment. Uh, another one is a bit more complicated, not very complicated, but a bit more complicated that includes strategic alignment. Uh, and finally, we will wrap up by talking about the proverbial gut feel. Um, uh, you know, the concept of yes, this project scores very low in my scoring model, but I have a gut feel that this is a great product or great project uh, that will take our company to the next level. What do you do about that? Uh, I think in the context of this, we'll talk about the Joker concept. Any questions so far? Uh, you can in your window and then uh, hopefully I'll see them. Okay, then let me move on. Uh, what I wanna do on the next two slides, I wanna conduct a quick quiz I'm going to give you top 10 signs that your company uh, is in need of product portfolio management. Uh, and I invite you, as I go through these attributes, to bend your fingers if you think that a particular attribute being described uh, can be attributed to your company. You know, you see something like that with your company. And at the end of this quiz, at the, this slide and the next one, I invite you just to type in how many of those signs can be attributed to your organization. And let's just see, you know, if there are more than five a person, then maybe you're in the right place. So project and resource managers often fight over resources. Uh, you have been given a project as a project manager. Uh, you are working in, well, I don't know, for the sake of the argument, let's say in IT department, you're doing a project for finance and marketing teams. Uh, but finance and marketing teams are reluctant to give you resources to work on the project for them. Projects frequently change with resources reassigned. Uh, you come in uh, from after Christmas and New Year's in January, and you're being told that Project A is the most super duper important project at the organization. By the time uh, March rolls in, you kind of look around and you suddenly discover that Project A is now priority number 20, and there's a whole bunch of other projects ahead of it. Uh, another good one senior managers have authority to unilaterally approve and release projects. Uh, as one of my uh, clients once said, he goes, you know how we start projects at this company? CEO walks into the conference room, snaps his fingers and goes, wouldn't it be really cool if we could do this? Bang, project started. Uh, next one, which is closely related to the previous one. Projects are started as soon as approved by managers, irrespective of the resource availability. So nobody really bothers to uh, say, okay, how much money do we need for this project? Uh, did we talk to the project manager? How many resources do we need? Do we have the human resources available. Projects are frequently late and or over budget and or do not deliver the full scope promise. With me so far? So this is the first slide. Make sure you bend your fingers. Let's move on to the next one. This is an interesting one. Even if the strategic idea is implemented and by strategic idea I mean a project, the company sometimes does not achieve the expected improvement. So basically you, you know, roll up your sleeves, you work hard for a year, you deliver something, and then one year later, you go and look back at that project and go, well, you know what, we delivered something, but nobody seems to be using it. We didn't seem to make any money out of this venture. No comprehensive document or portfolio that links all of the organizational projects to the strategic plan. Uh, let me explain this one. I walk into your CEO's office and I say, the list of all the projects going at the organization. Well, problem number one that most CEOs I know don't have that list. 
even if you say provide me with a list of top 20 most important projects running the company. Assuming that he or she provides me with that list, I randomly pick a project and go, why are you doing this? What is the linkage between this project and your strategy? And he or she will be able to explain that to me. Here's a second turnover at the senior management level, right up through the president. So basically what that means is that uh, your C-level team comes in, uh, they make promises, they talk about the great future for the company, three years go by, suddenly all of them are gone. A new team comes in, again, exactly the same promises, new strategy, and it's, you know, vicious cycle repeatable, time after time after time. A strategic plan is presented as a list of initiatives. So the classic tying those initiatives to the goals of the organization is absent. Kind of self-explanatory. A uh, list of initiatives is not prioritized. It basically means the list of your projects is not prioritized. Therefore, it is assumed that all of the projects must go ahead simultaneously. What I want you to do, I want you to, in the bottom right corner of your screen, you should have a message window. Type uh, how many of these attributes can be attributed to your company. Okay, three, four, four, okay, one minute. I'm getting a message that you guys have a hard time hearing me. Is this better? Okay. I'm going to hold the phone closer. Okay, okay, okay. So let me share one conversation I had with a CEO of a uh, Canadian, uh, pretty much government organization years ago. Actually, was an inspiration to start getting into project portfolio management for me. Teaching in a project management course, project management course for executives at that organization, with all the C-level people sitting in. And during one of the coffee breaks, he uh, approaches me and goes, "Listen, okay, I understand planning, monitoring, execution, control. It's all great, it's very useful. I have no doubt about that. I have a problem." And here's my problem. Uh, all of my department heads are constantly whining uh, that they don't have enough resources. And resources, I mean both human and uh, financial. I have two options in front of me. Option number one, I don't believe them. And as a result, I told them, I tell them to work really, really hard. Kind of roll up your sleeves and work harder approach. Uh, not really productive. Uh, on the other hand, I can choose to believe them. And in that case, again, I have two options. Either I give them more resources, but then again, how do I go in front of the board of directors and tell them, remember how I asked for $50 million in our budget? I'm now increasing this amount to $100 million. How do I explain to the board of directors? If I choose to cut some of the projects, again, how do I go to the board of directors and tell them, guys, remember we promised to do 50 projects? I'm downgrading this number to 25. What is the explanation that I give them? And then it just dawned on me. C-level people, the topics that they care